Have you ever wondered what street freestyle riders do to their bikes to be able to do circle wheelies, rolling stoppies, and to be able to drift around corners? We did as well. So we hit up Red Bull street freestyle athlete Aaron Colton and asked him what he does to his bike. Today in MC Garage, he's taken over to show us around his Triumph Street Triple R. Hey guys, welcome to MC Garage. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the anatomy of a stunt bike by going over the setup and techniques that I've acquired through my 15 year career working with two wheels. I'm sure you're wondering why this one is not a complete roach like the one you're picturing in your head right now, but the answer is simple. Just like there is club level racing and premier class racing, you have various different styles of setup for a freestyle motorcycle. In my eyes, this one is perfect. It's the combination of everything that I've learned with both my road racing and stunt riding endeavors. So cockpit setup on a freestyle motorcycle is crucial. It provides comfort and rider feedback. For me, the cockpit builds confidence. So what I did is I put my favorite Magira CP Bend wider handlebars than this comes with. And what that did is put me in a more upright stance to be able to carve and control stoppies, backing it in, drifting to give me a much more positive feel. Eliminating all ABS braking components was big and simplifying the handlebars with a Magira HC1 16 millimeter radial on the right and a 13 millimeter radial on the left that goes directly to my dual caliper bracket. Along with this, I have an Elite Motec leverage ratio advantage clutch where I can run this in unison with the handbrake to utilize the clutch and the rear brake anytime my feet are not able to be at the rider's controls. Also, for a lot of the drifting and backing it in, one thing these bikes are shy on is turning radius. So with custom clamps, we're able to achieve six degrees more turning radius in each direction. So the question I get at every single event that I go to is why is your fuel tank like this? You know, some have seen the typical hammer bash fuel cell, but they often haven't seen something to this scale. So the reason we have a Dix custom fuel cell built like this is for more clearance to pass through the handlebars for any freestyle maneuvers that's done in the tank and a lower flatter profile for acrobatics and standing maneuvers that happen on the motorcycle. This fuel cell specifically holds 10 liters of fuel and it's accompanied with an anti-slosh foam inside to help centralize that weight for whenever I'm steering on the front wheel for endo maneuvers as well as changing direction in a wheelie. So for the pilot seat, the folks at Saddleman helped me develop a low profile, stiff front seat, along with a very firm tail pad that essentially does the same as a tail pad does on a super bike, keeping you pressed forward when you're on the power. This keeps me pressed forward when I'm on the power as well as no handed when I have my foot locked under the peg. It helps lock me into the motorcycle and feel connected at all times. So in stunt riding, you're asking a lot out of your tires, and sometimes it's a different ass than they've normally been developed for. But quite honestly, a lot of the lateral forces you're putting on the front tire for carving endos or for backing into drift is a lot of the same features that you're gonna find a tire needs for a road racing background. So I run a Bridgestone R11 front, which is essentially a track tire, which provides an incredible amount of grip. I run it at 31 PSI cold. And then a common misconception about the rear tire is that a stunt rider runs a flat tire to ride a straight wheelie. Quite the opposite, actually. There are some riders out there that run upwards of 60 PSI. Personally, the setup I like is a Bridgestone BTO 1.6 at 35 PSI cold. And you really want a high performance street tire that's not quite a race tire. And the reason you want that is because you still need a good amount of side grip for a lot of the lateral ass and wide circle wheelies. But if you had a full race tire, it'd be hard to break the tire loose when you need to. So a good combination of more traction up front than the rear is a great combo. So gearing preference is something that can change a bit from rider to rider, but I personally like something in the middle. This motorcycle comes with a 1647 and I like a 1556. Now, although that sounds big, that's almost 10 teeth shy of what some other riders may prefer for an ultimate torque on the first gear. I prefer something in the middle so I can still get a good amount of range out of first and second gear for some of the smaller platform demos and still carry a high top speed if I need to. But overall, what I've achieved is a massive amount of low end torque for technical wheelie maneuvers. So an absolute must was eliminating the ABS braking system. Not only did it drastically improve rider fuel, it was an easy shed of seven pounds. How I replaced that was with a Magira HC1 radial master cylinder set up with a direct EBC T-line setup with an upgraded set of Advix calipers. This whole setup is about as much as I can ask for out of a sports setup. 
So in the early days of stunt riding, the handbrake setup was very simple. You took a master cylinder at the handlebar, you tied it into the foot brake master cylinder, and you used the stock rear braking components for your handbrake. Things have literally grown since then. Those were often overheating and many problems would happen. So what we have here is an NDC dual caliper bracket. What it's allowed me to do is run a larger diameter rear rotor with a four piston caliper at the foot brake and a four piston caliper at the handbrake. The nice thing about two separate calipers is it disperses the heat at a greater level and I'm able to choose the pad selection for each caliper. At the foot brake, I run an EVC centered FA pad, which has a very gradual bite and feel. And at the handbrake, where there's less power in the forearm, I run an EBC centered GPFA pad. This allows me some interchangeability with how I want the setup and the bite to feel. And that's the evolution of what we currently have for a handbrake setup. As for suspension setup, I swapped out the rear shock with an Olin's TTX and was able to get away with a revalve on the forks. For setup wise, me as a 170 pound rider, what I found the best setup was an expert level road racing settings for a 210 pound rider. Plus minus 40 pound gain on what the settings would actually be because in certain situations when the motorcycle is under control on only one wheel, it needs a little extra support. A freestyle bike lives on the rev limiter and that creates a lot of heat. And when I'm riding at an area like Circuit of the Americas or Indy Motor Speedway, no issue. There's plenty of room in between to cool the thing down and it runs great. When I get put in a small compact demo area, that's when I really run into issues. So I run Evans Coolant accompanied with the OEM fan, which runs on the thermostat, and then an additional fan that runs on the key. What that does is it allows me to head start on cooling the motorcycle down before I reach the boiling point to keep the overall system at a cooler, more relaxed state before I have to park the thing. So as far as engine modification goes, I run a rather stock motor configuration on the Street Triple. But what I do have is an SC Project 3-into-1 titanium exhaust system accompanied with the Bizzazz tuning and quick shift software. What that allows me to do is have a reliable engine package that runs clean for all of the aggressive riding that happens down low. And for foot peg setup, one problem that I have with cast foot pegs is even on a normal riding, they just break. They break on me and that's something I don't have much confidence in. So this is a set of CNC adjustable rear sets. Basically, once you set them, they're good to go for the duration, but this is the exact distance I like from the foot pegs to the seat. And if I ever have a mishap, since it's interchangeable parts, I can just take off a peg and replace it as I go. So on most stunt bikes, you'll find a big, heavy crash cage on the side, and that takes away so much of the performance characteristics of the motorcycle. So the solution that I've found is I like to run these GB Racing engine protection covers accompanied with this Rizoma frame slider. And what that allows me to do is keep the weight down, and if I have a little spill here and there, I just replace one of these covers and call it a day. And that keeps the program light for this track-ready freestyle bike. So idle control often draws a lot of question marks for some people watching a freestyle demo because they see a rider take their hands off the handlebars and do no-handed circle wheelie or have something so smooth and buttery that they can't comprehend how the throttle is reacting that way. Well, what's been done is the idle adjustment screw has been removed from the throttle body and a adjustment screw has been screwed in that you can actually modulate that all the way from 500 RPM to 10K if you want. But basically, most of the time, it's around the three to 4,500 RPM rate. And that's just a simple few turns of this screw right here that adjusts your base idle for different freestyle maneuvers. So the rear foot peg set up on this in technical term sub cage actually accomplishes a few things. Stock foot pegs really don't have the gusto to support the rider's weight like it's needed. So you have a bulked up rear foot peg design that gives you another platform for combinations to transfer your weight across the motorcycle. But also, as most of the new motorcycle subframes are cast, there's fragile as glass. So we're able to tie both sides together, strengthen the entire unit as a whole, and give a better, more confident footing position for the rider. So as in any freestyle sport, setup is open to interpretation, and I hope you enjoyed mine. If you had any more questions, please drop it in the comments below. And tune in to next week's episode of MC Garage. Yeah.